So you've decided your game needs a rhythm part in it. Or maybe you want to create a new rhythm game from scratch. Great idea. You've caught the rhythm bug. We were gonna call it Beat Mania, but that was already taken. Be careful though, you've wandered into a dark forest. One false step, and you could fall victim to the silent killer. Bad Rhythm UX. Rhythm games depend on great UX. I can't think of a genre that's as closely tied to its interface as rhythm games. If an RPG has terrible menus but a great story, you can manage. A really janky looking shooter that feels good to play can sell millions of copies. But a rhythm game with a weird UI or one that feels wrong can be dead in the water. Good interfaces aren't simple to design, but there are plenty of easy things to do that can improve a mediocre one, and there's a shocking number of rhythm games that just don't bother. Let's take a tour of the current state of rhythm game UI and UX, and look at how to put the fun in functional rhythm game user interfaces. Look around you. Does your space say, me? Or does it say, me need posters? Go pick up some really nice ones at today's episode sponsor, Display. Check this out. I've decorated this wall with a bunch of new posters. And not just any posters, metal posters. You put them up with magnets. I'm never going back to paper posters again. Display has thousands of designs ready to ship. I love these artistic options. Display hosts amazing artists that are putting up new designs all the time, and your purchases support them directly. If you're more in the mood for official branded content, Display has partnered with lots of your favorites like Star Wars, Marvel, sports teams, and lots and lots of video game companies. I really like these things. They're faster, way more durable, and I think they look better than framing paper posters. It took me two minutes to get their magnet mounting system on my wall. No tools required, and then a couple of seconds to get the poster up. You don't have to worry about nails or hammers or framing anything or aligning stuff right. I can instantly swap one poster for another too. I have no idea how they could even make it any faster than this. It's great. Get yourself something nice over at Display by clicking the link in the description. Right now you'll get 22-33% to off at checkout, but only if you use the link in the description, and you'll be helping support this channel as well. Thanks, Display. Okay, so this is not going to be about UX issues at the very highest end of rhythm gaming. This isn't for the full combo super freaks. You're all too good for this. Someone submitting scores to Life 4 has different needs than a general audience that just wants to play a game with some rhythm elements. But there will be things here that are useful for everyone. Let's start with something foundational. There's a challenge that every rhythm game has to deal with. Timing is everything. The entire game. The only part of the game is syncing up the animation on screen, the audio track, and the player's inputs. Get any of those elements out of sync with the others, and playing the game becomes almost impossible, let alone making it feel good to play. But even though rhythm games are lag dependent, that doesn't mean they have to be lag free. The average rhythm game plays a lot like a roller coaster. The notes are on a track, and you deal with each note as they come to you. If you can match what that track expects you to do, you get a high score. These rhythm games don't involve a lot of decisions and branching paths. And because of that, you can actually sidestep lag entirely. It doesn't matter how much input lag there is, or how long it takes your TV to output the visuals and sound. All that matters is that they're synced up. No matter your input lag, you can shift the game's audio and visuals to compensate. Even if it's ridiculously slow like a half second of lag on a projector TV, the game can delay the visuals and audio by a half second to match. To the player, the game will feel like it's synced up again. But to take advantage of that, you do have to code a game to do the adjusting for you. It's a large chunk of why it's so hard to go back to rhythm games made in the pre-digital TV era. Consoles were hooked up to TVs through analog RF adapters and RCA cables, with little to no lag. So games from that era could assume that there was no need to put in a way to adjust for it. If you play one of these older games on a modern TV, that assumption isn't true anymore. And with no way to adjust for it, you're simply out of luck. Vibribbon is laggy, but at least the timing windows are forgiving. Parappa is almost unplayable on most modern hardware without any way to calibrate. Inexplicably, Parappa's 2017 remaster still didn't add a calibration option. You rappin' bad. Forever. But modern games know better. Most people's home entertainment systems will have some amount of lag, 
and we can adjust for it. But there's no telling how much lag anyone's particular TV and audio setup has. They might be two different amounts even. How do you figure how much delay a game needs to feel like it's synced up? There's the manual way, ask the player how much delay there is, and just trust that they're right. Some games do it like this, pick a number, test it out, then adjust manually if it doesn't feel right to you. But do you know what number is right? How do you know? You're probably going to have to guess and check a few times before you nail it. But is that really the best the game can do? I don't think so. There's also a more automatic way. Why don't you play the game? Just play a practice round of a game and don't score it. Average out how far off the beat the player's actions are from where the game thinks they should be. That difference is the lag, and the game can set it automatically. If the player was genuinely trying, that's all you need. They don't need to know about lag, how their TV works, or any manual setting at all. The best UI is sometimes the one you don't even know is there. Better yet, you can combine this calibration step with the game's tutorial and get both out of the way at once. That's what Rhythm Heaven Fever does. As you start, you're taught how to play the game. It's not too hard. The game plays an audio track, and all you have to do is press the button to the beat. That's what you're going to be doing anyway, so why not warm up with this? The game figures out how far off you are on average, sets the delay in the background, and sends you off on your merry way. Lag syncing is not sexy, but it's absolutely necessary for modern rhythm games. Streamlining the process and making sure every player goes through it, even those who have no idea what input lag is, builds the bedrock that holds up the rest of the game. Okay, we've gotten through the setup. Now we can get to the main event. If you aren't careful, rhythm games can seem like they require a lot of memorization to play properly. Seeing a flood of notes to hit can overwhelm new players, like you're being thrown into the deep end with no context. It's way more fun if you don't need to study a note chart to do well, or at least good enough to pass it on your first go. The difference between games that feel like memorizing and games that feel breezier and more accessible often comes down to how well they support sight reading. Sight reading is a term borrowed from the music world. It's the ability to play a piece you've never heard before by just looking at the sheet music and taking a crack at it. For rhythm games, sight reading involves being able to play a song by just going for it and hitting the notes as they come to you. Being able to do well on something you've never prepared for is one of the most satisfying parts of rhythm games and gives a real payoff to sticking with a game over the long haul and learning all of its quirks and features. It makes you sort of feel like you're predicting the future. But for a game to support sight reading, it needs to give some tools. How can you help players keep the beat? It could be through color cues. Dance Dance Revolution has used them since the start. The arrows flash different colors depending on what part of the beat they're supposed to be stepped on. Quarter notes, eighth notes, sixteenths, and even triplets all look different from one another. After a while, you'll develop a sense of when even the isolated arrows are supposed to be pressed just by what color they are. DDR is a very sight-readable game, thanks in part to its rigorous use of color to help guide players through unfamiliar step charts. Or you could use shape cues to help make a chart more sight-reading friendly. Guitar Hero and Rock Band lay out their no highways on a board that looks like the fretboard of a guitar, with new frets whizzing by right on the beat. You can tell at a glance when an approaching note will need to be played by how it lines up with the frets, and you can see when an isolated note has to be hit offbeat. A Dance of Fire and Ice does the same thing with the layout of the path of a song. As the path twists around, the change in direction from square to square tells you when you have to hit the game's single action in order to keep progressing. The songs aren't famous, the game doesn't expect you to know them before you play, but you can play a level and get through it all the same, just by reading the shape of the path ahead of you. Beat Saber runs into one unique sight reading issue. The game works by you swiping at boxes with your VR laser sword, and the arrows on the boxes tell you which way you have to cut them. It's really fun and one of the best you can't do this anywhere else use cases for VR. Once you get to the harder difficulties though, it's very easy for those arrows to get hidden behind other boxes. You play it for a while and you'll get a sense for the arm motions that those boxes are trying to get you to do, but good luck figuring that out the first time you play through a char on Expert Plus. You can't sight read what you can't see. There's another strain of rhythm games in the spotlight lately. Rhythm hybrids. Games from other genres that fold in rhythm elements to help them stand out. Hi-Fi Rush is a rhythm character action game. BPM, bullets per minute, is a rhythm FPS. Mad Rat Dead is a rhythm platformer. 
Mixing in rhythm elements is great for making a game feel like a fresh take on a genre, but it doesn't come for free. Rhythm hybrids have to watch out for things that a pure rhythm game doesn't. Lots of them run into an attention splitting problem. These hybrids make players think about all the things that matter in games of the original genre, plus rhythm elements. It's easy for players to drop focus on one side or the other. There's only so much attention to go around. Pure rhythm games don't have that focus split. Beat Saber doesn't have to do as much to remind you to keep the tempo. So how do these hybrids try to steer you back to the beat? Hi-Fi Rush does just about the most labor-intensive and probably most effective thing you can do, animate everything to the rhythm. The world of Hi-Fi Rush bobs and sways to a global rhythm, and the game isn't subtle about it. The game setup involves your iPod getting compressed into you, and thanks to magic or something, everything around you keeps to the beat in your heart. Every step you take follows it, every attack lands on time, and strong attacks take two. Every piece of background music is set to a tempo. Everything, all the way down to the platforms, the machinery in the background, and even the little graphical flash effects, follow the beat. As the world goes, so should you. Your attacks and dashes are meant to be timed to it as well. If you do it right, a little note appears, and they're a little more effective. Try to attack offbeat, and you lose a combo, don't get the damage bonus, still have to wait around for the attack to happen, and your ranking at the end of a section will be a little worse. The world is nudging you constantly to keep the beat with positive reinforcement, and that makes the game's rhythm elements deeply tied to the world, not like something optional or tacked on at the last second. That commitment to the rhythm is very important. No Straight Roads is what it might have looked like if Hi-Fi Rush hadn't gone all the way with it. No Straight Roads is another character action game built around rhythm. Enemy attacks, obstacles, and some many games move in sync, but your attacks and movement don't. You're just running around like this was a typical character action game. Without your character sticking with the rhythm, that part of the game's design immediately feels way less essential. And when parts of the game stick to it and other parts don't, it can make the game feel like it's clashing with itself. It's not from a lack of effort. The devotion you need to pull this off is very tough to do. The little details are expensive to create and maintain. Metronomic is a small team on a budget, and to expect the same out of them as you'd expect out of Tango Gameworks isn't fair. They can't do miracles. No Straight Roads is an extremely creative game with some good set pieces that occasionally remind me of the best parts of Psychonauts. But as a rhythm action hybrid, it's missing a critical piece. Even with great intentions, the little details make all the difference in how the final game feels. Rhythm hybrids have another problem that pure rhythm games don't. Their audience doesn't self-select for rhythm game skills. The highest ends of pure rhythm games look like a blur to someone unfamiliar with them, but lots of these rhythm hybrids just look like other action games. Someone who doesn't feel comfortable with rhythm might not bother trying Project Diva, but they might want to give BPM a shot. They won't have the knowledge and instincts that a veteran rhythm game fan takes for granted, but that doesn't mean they can't get a little more comfortable especially if the game helps smooth over that gap. It's always better for a game to try to meet players at their skill level, wherever that is. So, how can they help rhythm game newbies get into the groove? Visual Assist can help a lot. Crypt of the Necrodancer, Mad Rat Dead, and BPM all prominently display a timing bar that lets you see when you're supposed to be doing things. Without that cue, you're relying on a player to intuit what the beat is supposed to be. The Rhythm Assist bar can show someone quickly and consistently whether a player is hitting early, late, or on time. They're designed to be prominent and eye-catching, which helps reinforce that this is the way to play and improve at the game. Hi-Fi Rush has one and even lets you flip it on and off, so players can get all the benefits of a Rhythm Assist bar while they're getting used to the game, then declutter the UI when they get more comfortable. Rhythm hybrids are great entry points to this style of game, and the right UX can help get people past the intimidation to become new Rhythm fans. I couldn't get every game I wanted to in one of the points, so here are some rapid fire rhythm games I want to make sure I don't leave out of this video. Osu, when a fan community takes the lack of a new Awendon personally. Mad Maestro, the most royalty free of all music games. And the one that uses the PS2 pressure sensitivity pads that is not named Metal Gear Solid. DDR Solo, for one brief shining moment, there were six arrows. Para Para Paradise, a game for a dance style from 20 years ago. Melatonin. Looks like Mob Psycho, plays like Rhythm Heaven. Before the Echo. Hey, that little boy is playing three DDR games at once. Everhood. 
What if Undertale was a rhythm game? Res, it's just vibin'. Sayonara Wild Hearts, I've talked about this too much. Did anyone hear about the DDR DVD game that was just a looping video with a plastic mat that had no electronics in it? Does no interface count as a bad interface? Head down to the comments and discuss that and whatever other weird rhythm game UX you can think of. Every rhythm game that comes out seems to invent its interface from scratch, so there's plenty more to talk about. Also, check out the link in the description for Displayed for some great posters. Thanks to Display for sponsoring. Good UX isn't a given, but the basics aren't all that hard, and getting it right sets the stage for a great rhythm game.